Okay, so on the server, we've got an installation of NLTK. NLTK is a Python toolkit for natural language processing. We're not using NLTK here, I'm just referencing it because that's where we're going to get the data. So NLTK comes with a bunch of corpora. Okay, so a, corp a corpus is a collection of texts. Here we're going to use one of those texts and do something interesting with it. So there's a lot of really interesting things that we can do with texts at the command line just using shell commands without even having to get into programming per se. Okay, so if we look in user share NLTK data, we'll notice that there's a bunch of stuff there. Some of this is going to be the NLTK libraries. We're going to look inside corpora, and there's a whole bunch of corpora there. Uh, one of them is the United Nations Declarations of Human Rights, which is a great one to look at because it's available in a ton of different languages. Um, plus, it's a great document to read. Um, we're going to be looking at Europarl. So Europarl is a, they're only including a very small snippet of Europarl here, but Europarl is the Proceedings of the European Union Parliament, which for quite a few years were simultaneously published in all of the official languages of the European Union, which is a great, made them a great resource for machine translation research, because you had the same text available in 23 times 22 language pairs. Uh, they have sadly since stopped translating it into everything, and they just take whatever the speaker speaks in and translates it into English. Um, but for a long time they translated it into anything. So we're going to look specifically at the English data and you can see that there is only what two, four, six, eight files here. In the full Europarl corpus there's a lot more files than this. But this is eight days worth of data for, from, the, from people getting up and speaking in front of the European Union Parliament. So these are members of Parliament getting up and speaking. All right, so what we're going to do is um, turn my phone off first. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, and so we're going to do star. And first, you do wc-l and see how many lines of text we've got there. Okay, we've got just under 20,000 lines of text. Okay, let's take a look at those files, see what they look like. Resumption of the session. I declare resumed the session of the European Parliament adjourned on Friday, December 19th, 1999, and would like to yada, yada, yada. Okay, all right. Notice that these files have already been tokenized. So the punctuation is already split off of them. The originals are not tokenized. It just so happens that the versions that, are, that NLTK is providing us have already been tokenized. Okay? All right. So there's spaces between all of the tokens. Uh, notice here what I'm doing in less. I'm in less. I opened a bunch of files. I hit colon N, and I go to the next file. Colon N, I go to the next file. Colon P, I go to the next file. So you can browse back and forth between files when you're using less, just like you can switch between different tabs in a web browser. Okay, all right, so I'll hit Q to exit. And how did I, why did I use WC? Well, WC prints the number of lines or words or bytes or characters in a document. Okay, so what do I wanna to try to do here? So, we're going to use a bunch of the commands that we've already encountered to go through and find the most frequent words in order of frequency in these documents. Okay, So we, want to, we can do a, a corpus examination and find out what is the single most common token in this batch of English. Okay, And then we could use the same techniques on any of the other languages. For English, I mean, it's a pretty safe bet that it's the, but it, we can see where the tail goes, where the tail take this. Okay. So if I want to do this, what do I need to do, just conceptually? 
Well, I'm going to start off by maybe splitting all of the all of the sentences so that I've got one word per line instead of one sentence per line. So right now I've got one sentence per line. Are there any tools that we've looked at so far that would be useful for turning a space into a new line character? What, what are some of the tools, what's, what's a tool that we've encountered so far that could do that? If we don't remember, let's try apropos. Hmm, was that helpful? Not really. What about convert? Well, oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff there. What's that? So there's a bunch of here, these here. If you remember from the text though, TR, translator delete characters. There's a bunch of them, we could use said, that's a little bit overkill. TR is perfect here, okay? So translate from set one into set two. So what am I gonna do? I'm going to take this data, I'm going to concatenate it to standard output. So if I do that, just prints everything. So I'm going to pipe it, okay? So I'm going to take the standard output of cat and redirect it to the standard input of some other command, okay? The command that I'm going to do is tr, okay? So tr, I'm going to say, take every time you see a space and convert each of those spaces to a new line character. Okay, so I've taken every space and converted it to a new line character. I translated space into new line. You can also use TR to squeeze extra spaces out, to delete characters. So what would happen if I, instead of doing this, I did this, TR-D, what's that gonna do? It'll delete all the spaces. Okay, so this is what that English looks like if it were, were it written without spaces as some other languages are. Uh, it's amazing how easily you can read it once you get started. As far as the treaty is concerned, the intergovernmental conferences started this week, we, so we do not know the results yet. Okay, um, all right, but we're gonna do this to put every word on its own line. Okay, so now that we've got every word on its own line, let's think about how we can, what we would need to do conceptually. What would we do if we were doing this by hand? It would be extremely tedious, but if I was going to do this by hand, I would want all of the words together somehow. I mean, I could either keep a tally, keep a running tally, but that's going to require secondary storage. Or I could take advantage of a program that can do manage the secondary storage on its own and sort them. So I could go through and sort it so that all of the instances of the are together. All of the instances of kumquat are together. And then I just go through count each one. So I'm going to pipe again the output of TR, the standard output of TR, to sort. What does sort do? Sorts lines of text. By default, if I don't provide a file, it will sort the, what it receives on standard input. Okay, so I'm going to sort And I got this. What did I do wrong? 
I kept the deletion of the spaces. So what this did is sorted the entire set, sorted the whole corpus by sentences. Okay. Let's try something interesting here. Let's keep that. Do the sort. Okay. And now see how many lines we got. Should still be the same number of lines. Okay. So WC tells me the same number of lines. Now I'm going to do unique and then pipe it to WC. Unique, if unique has more than one line in a row that's identical, it gets rid of the extras so that there's only one copy left. What is this going to tell us? This is going to tell us whether or not there are any identical sentences in the corpus. Turns out there are some. Okay, so in this corpus, there are one, there are uh, 980 minus this number of unique sentences, or rather duplicates. So there are some duplicates. Okay, so let's go back to what we were doing before, or trying to do, and rather than delete, we're going to use tr to translate spaces into new line characters. Okay, and then we're going to sort the output. Okay, notice that there was a pause there at the beginning. Why was there a pause? There was a pause because sorting can potentially involve some secondary storage, and so it was doing some, some writing to disk if it needed to write to disk, or if it didn't need to write to disk, it was keeping it in RAM and doing it in RAM. Okay? Before we sort, we could even ask, how many words were there? WC, might, we're going to do one word per line now. So we've got 556,000 words in this corpus. Okay. If I check after sorting, I should have the same number, but they'll be sorted now. Okay. Now. We looked at unique before, so unique is going to report or omit repeated lines. Okay. The most common flag that I use with unique is dash c or dash dash count, which tells how many duplicate lines there were. So every time it encounters duplicates, it will record the duplicate, the number of duplicates, or the, rather the number of instances. Okay. So let's just first pipes sort into less so we can just look at it. Takes it a second. If everybody's doing this, it's slowing it down more. Let's try that. Let's redirect the results into a file that I'll call europarl.txt. So this is redirecting, and now I can use less on that file. And something didn't work. So what did I do wrong? Let's see. Okay. If you find that your script is not outputting what you expected it to, then back up and make changes on progressively simpler parts until it's working as you expect it. Okay, so this is working as I expect it. Let's just look at the first, I don't know, thousand lines so that it'll run faster and sort them. Okay, so that's doing fine. Okay, so looks good. So notice here that if we've got duplicate lines or duplica duplications of any words, they show up together after I've sorted them. Okay. So after I sort, I can run unique, and then I only have one instance of every word. If I instead do unique dash c, then I get prefixed how many times that word occurred. OK. 
Okay. All right. So let's get rid of head. Okay, so now that did the whole corpus. But that's not super helpful because this is, this is still in alphabetical order. So this is still in the, in the sorted order. But what I'd like to see is I'd now like to sort again, but this time I'd like it to sort by numerical value at the beginning of the line. Okay, so let's go back to the sort man page. And it turns out right here, there's a couple of options for numeric sorting. Okay, so I can use dash n to get a numeric sort. Okay, so I'm going to pipe this again to sort with dash n. And there we go. We have the single most frequent token in English not surprisingly, is the, okay? And if we want to put this in a file, I can put it in a file. Now let's say I might want to take this, import it to my, to my non-Linux machine, and open it up in Excel so that I can do some other things that way. I, I personally wouldn't do that for most things, but some, pipe, some people might find that helpful. So let's see what else we could do. Excel knows how to open tab-separated files. And so let's reformat this. So we'll take this and let's use said to replace the space that's in between the things, okay? So let's see if we can do that. Uh, so first of all, it may be the case that we've already got tabs in there, so let's see. Nope. Wrong file. Cut. So cut remove sections, delimiter tab is default. So cut dash F1. If these columns are already separated by tabs, this will pull out just the number. If this is in fact a space, then it'll return the whole line. I don't remember what sort returns. So we're just going to have to try it. To make it faster, so I don't have to run sort on the whole thing, again, I'm going to insert head here, which we'll remove later. Gave me the whole thing, which means that there's not already a tab in there. Okay. All right. So let's try something else. Let's go back to TR and let's just delete the spaces, see, if, see what that gives us. Well, that's a little helpful, except we've got this problem that it's all squished together. So let's try something else instead. So sed is a stream editor. We can use that to do find and replace as we're going through. Okay, so let's try this. Let's recall that the caret is going to mark the beginning of line. And then space, star. So what is that going to be? Caret space star means at the beginning of line, match zero or more spaces. And then I want to replace them with nothing. Okay, so I'm going to use S, which is the substitute operator. Sed allows you to use any character as the delimiter. Often you'll use slashes. I tend to use commas, but you just have to use them in all three places. So at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end. Okay, so what this says is here's a regular expression. Search 
through what's coming for anything that matches the beginning of line followed by zero or more spaces and replace it with nothing. Okay, this gets us to here. Now, the only spaces that should be left are right here. Okay, and so now I can use tr to translate the spaces into tabs. I could have likewise done set again, used set again. Okay. There we go. All right, so now let's take out head. And pipe this into a file. Frequent words, except now I'm not going to use the extension dot text. I could, but I'll try to give it a more semantically meaningful extension, which here is going to be dot TSV. Okay. I can use less to look at the frequent words. And here's the tabs. There's a tab. Now what I could do is exit out from the server and use SCP, which is secure copy, to copy that file from the server. So I would do my username at the server name, colon, wherever I place that file. I'm just hitting tab to do the autocomplete there. And then I'll just copy it here. And now I'm on a Mac. And so I can just say open, but I could alternatively open up Excel and find that particular file and do a file open and it would just open. But if I type open frequent words.tsv, it should open in, in whatever spreadsheet program I have configured by default, which for me is a variant of OpenOffice. Um, so that's how, and it's asking confirm, do I want this delineated by tabs? I do. And if I fix my column widths, there I go. So these are things that occurred only once, singletons. If I scroll all the way back down to the end, I'll find the most common words in the language. Okay. All right. And that is...